Okay, good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. We're going to talk basketball this morning. Southwestern Boys Basketball Coach Jerry Ball, hold in. Good morning, Coach. Morning, Tim. How are you? Good, you? Um, I'm above ground, and at my age, that's always a plus. It is a plus. It is a plus. I always look forward to this particular program because we cover more topics than just basketball. But uh, basketball season on the horizon next Wednesday. You open things up at Hosting Madison. Let's talk about (laughs) kind of what's going on between the end of last season and where you're at right now. I know 25 wins a year ago. a, a loss in the regional, but talk about what you guys have been doing in the off season. Well, I think uh, first of all, Tim, the last two years have, uh, at least for these guys and uh, everybody that's back, has, has ended disappointingly for us. And uh, I think they made the commitment and the decision to, you know, our, our job was not to let that happen again. And so uh, we've probably had a harder preseason and have worked harder. And, and what I mean by that is uh, this group of kids, especially with the uh, leadership of these three, uh, we've, we've gone, uh, for example, in the weight room and every repetition that we do in there now is uh, to their max, to their, I mean, they're just busting their tails in the same way in practice. So we, we've actually put in harder workouts and have really had to back off uh, a little bit now to recover here before we get into the season and these guys made that commitment that they weren't happy the way the last two seasons ended and, and you know people are going to be sitting out in the community and say gosh you won 49 games mm-hmm. in two years but because of the way they ended a year two years ago with Matthew getting hurt and then last year with us not really playing very well against Tell City I, I think we looked at it as for us, that's disappointing. We think we can take it a step farther or more. Mm-hmm. And so that was our commitment when we started was that we're going to try to get to that next level. Well, you have a, a – if you have a coach that's a Hall of Fame coach, a coach that's won uh, just a, an exuberant amount of ball games, a lot of knowledge, this and that, it, it still takes the kids and their dedication to make it happen. You know, you, you can be uh, extremely intelligent – and uh, be the kind of coach that uh, people look at, and if all they do is look at records, they may say, well, that guy's really good. But you got to have the kind of kids uh, that are willing to buy in, willing to listen. And I will say that for these kids, uh, you know, this is their third year now at the varsity level. Mm-hmm. And we knew coming in when they were freshmen that if we just did what, we needed to do and we can stay the course and and keep things in perspective that you know we're going to have an awfully awfully successful program for four or five years in a row here and they've taken the first two years of that and taken to heart so now we're in the last part of that and as i said to them you know at the beginning when we first got together when school started hey this is your junior year already mm-hmm. you're halfway done and i think it hit pretty close to home and then so they've said okay we're gonna we're gonna take that next try to take that next level up in terms of work ethic and everything and uh you know again if you have the the kind of kids that we have it makes that job easier because they all have bought in and they work their tails off and the other thing uh, even last night in our soap scrimmage that is more apparent with these kids than a lot of the other teams we've had is that they are so good together Mm -hmm. they play so unselfishly and uh we're always making the extra pass and finding the open man nobody cares uh really who scores who the whole object for them is to win Mm -hmm. whatever it takes whatever um you know is involved in that and again with these three along with our uh other two starters which right now are billy eccles and zach cole Mm -hmm. those five kids together have been just tremendous in the preseason here and uh we think we got a pretty good chance of being pretty good now 49 wins over a couple of seasons and you look at what they've accomplished and everybody feels because it ended the way it did the the two seasons that, that maybe it wasn't a success but i mean if you put things in perspective and you take the record out of it it still was success because the the kids played hard and they progressed from beginning to end well i think that's the big thing with these guys when they came in as freshmen you could do a quick evaluation of them as basketball players and they all had certain gifts and certain things they did really well but what these kids have done these three along with our others they've now 
now complemented their their game that started out by doing some additional things. You know, I use all three of them as an example here. Foster is now an absolutely tremendous shooter, but he's put in a lot of time. When we first got him as a freshman, he was fantastic taking the ball to the basket. But really people started playing off of him and giving him a shot because he hadn't worked really hard on his jump shot. Now he's a tremendous shooter. AK's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. AK was uh, a kid who could shoot the three and, and didn't probably drive it as well. Now he can do that, take it to the hole. Both of those kids are great free throw shooters. Matthew's another one who tremendous perimeter game has grown a little bit gotten stronger now he's got to be an inside presence for us and he's shown in the preseason he can do that and again with all three of these kids being potential 85 90 percent free throw shooters uh, that's a tremendous advantage for us you know tim a year ago people don't realize unless they look at the statistics we shot more free throws than any team in the state of indiana we shot 500 and some mm -hmm. free throws for the year which always is an indication to me that we're doing some really good things offensively, taking the ball to the basket, uh, doing those things. And then on top of not only shooting a lot of free throws, we shot a high percentage. We shot 78% from the free throw line, which I think was third in the state of Indiana. So not only are we getting there, but then we're converting the free throw percentage. So from that perspective, these kids have all in a couple of years' time improved their game on the offensive end. And the key for us this year is how we – play defense and how we rebound. If we can really take our defensive play up to the same level that these kids are capable of playing on the offensive end, then we're going to be a really, really good basketball team. When you have kids that have deficiencies and they need to improve their game, again, as I mentioned a little bit ago, it's it's they have to be willing to make the change or willing to work hard to get to that point. Yeah, you, you just try to be honest and upfront with them and say, you know, if you really want to get to your potential and really help our team, to, to the extent that we need, here's what you need to do. And these three kids are the greatest examples I've had of doing the things they needed to do to improve their games. And uh, they're willing to work, you know. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times in the spring and the summertime uh, the phone rings and, uh, hey, coach, can you open the gym for us? Mm -hmm. um, and my wife would always say, you got to be kidding. we got to go do <laughs> And I said, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. We've been doing this a long time. Right. Th this is the kind of – kids the group of kids that we wanted mm -hmm. all these to, to bug us to death to go in there so i don't think they could they could tell you i never hesitated if i was available to to get over there and give them time to get in the gymnasium and they have put the time and effort in and at some point in time i try to keep reinforcing to them at some point in time it's going to pay off right. with big dividends and we hope it's going to be before they graduate from high school coach 39 seasons seem like 39 you know, I, I remember first starting and uh, being an assistant and then being a varsity assistant and then having the things that happened early in my coaching career when coach died and some of those things. And it, it just, uh, it's gone very quickly, but it's also been very rewarding because of the opportunities I've had, uh, thanks to the good Lord, have put me in positions and places where I've had the opportunity to work with kids like this. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking five, six years ago when we had the opportunity to come back to Southwestern and in the situation that was present at that time, uh, you know, Tim, the, the program was probably at, a, at one of the lowest points it had been. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know if it was going to be worth it at my age uh, to go back through that. And now I look at the opportunity that uh, has uh, uh, arrived with – these three kids and their mm -hmm. classmates coming in as freshmen and then the couple of classes ahead of them with uh, TK and those guys. And so these five years, even though the first couple were such a struggle, uh, they've been so rewarding. And, uh, and yet I don't think we've even come close yet to reaching the limits that these kids can get to. So it's just been a pleasure for me. Mm -hmm. It's gone fast. Uh, the thing that always makes coaching for me rewarding uh, it's just like the teaching part. If you have good classes and you're able to have kids that are uh, enthused about what you're doing, uh, and these guys are basketball junkies. That's mm -hmm. just what they are, and uh, it's just been neat to be part of it. I, I think so many times we put the emphasis on a coach and the effect that he has on kids, but I think the whole thing's lost sometimes in the community and out there that 
the effect that kids mm -hmm. have on us coaches. Right. And uh, these guys have affected me in such a positive way that, uh, you know, I, I probably stayed a couple of years longer than maybe I had originally intended. Uh, and who knows, maybe maybe one more year, maybe two, I don't know. You know, this is my year I am retiring from teaching. So uh -oh. at the end of the school year, I'll be uh, done teaching. But right. I'd like to hang on, and as long as these kids stick around and keep right. working as hard as they're working, I think coaching them has been such a pleasure. I'd like to continue it. So, They're basketball junkies. Do you have to remind them to, to be kids every once in a while? I uh, know they take I don't have to remind them at all they can do that on their own uh, at, once they leave practice I'm sure they'll uh, you know I, I, I look at uh, trucks with uh, mud all over them uh, I, I get phone calls that uh, we got stuck in a mud hole somewhere uh, trying to go down roads that we shouldn't have gone down uh, uh, th th they're kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the great thing about it is they can turn that off and on because they can come to basketball practice and our workouts in the weight room and be as intense and as serious as you can be. And then as soon as they walk out, they can go, you know, do their things. And the other thing I really appreciate about them is they're the kinds of kids that schools and coaches and communities want to be represented sure. by them because, you know, unless I'm so naive, Tim, that I'm just completely out of it, uh, we don't deal in our program right now with any drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. tobacco, mm -hmm. things like that. These guys, you know, their life, they understand. They understand what they have at stake. They understand the role models they're going to be for all those little kids that come out on game night right. and watch them. And so they put that in perspective. And that's the other thing that makes it neat because they are the kind of kids that they are. Over and I, I ask you this. I think about every year we do this, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask you again. When we do this uh, and we talk about coaching and, and all your years of coaching, how's the game changed? Well, or the, has it? The structurally, the game's changed because they've added the three-point line. Of course, these guys grew up with it. Right. They don't know any different. Right. Uh, but it, it's changed from that perspective. Uh, uh, it, the game for me. Uh, hasn't because they'll tell you that sometimes even to the point of being stubborn that I'm old school and I still want us to do things like get to the free throw line right. and all those things. Uh, but so many times you just watch and the more I scout I see teams that you know they're going to live and die by shooting a three. Well uh, you know I, I really believe over the years that if that's all you can do uh, eventually uh, it, it catches up with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be a difficult team, for example, to play against on both ends of the floor. These guys don't always understand that, but now I think they're st it's starting to sink in. If you really want to advance in a tournament and if you want to be a championship caliber basketball team, you have to do that. That's kind of old school. Mm -hmm. For me, that part of the game has not changed at all. Um, I think another thing that I, I see has changed is kids are so much more skilled mm -hmm. now than we used to be. Uh, Coach Wynn and I talked about this the other night that neither one of us were that good of players in high school. We would have done anything in the world to have teammates like this to have played with, uh, to have ability like they have. Uh, so I think kids spend more and more time I think there's more kids specializing mm -hmm. than there used to be because a lot of kids used to be three and four, speed, four sport athletes. Uh, we're, we seem to be more centered in now, uh, even though all these guys play at least two sports. Right. Um, uh, so from that perspective, the, the structural part of the game's changed for me mm -hmm. as a coach. Our approach has been pretty consistently the same. Mm -hmm. What I've tried to do as a coach is say, okay, with these guys when they came in, we can play a lot faster. We couldn't play very fast when right. I first came back. If we'd have played fast, we'd have had some people get hurt in the gym up in the bleachers because we'd have thrown that thing everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we'd have had some people that had to wear armor <laughs> coming to our games just to protect themselves. These guys, we don't have to worry that, about that. We can play fast. Uh, last year we averaged seven, eight turnovers, almost 70 points a game. Mm -hmm. Tim, that's pretty good. Yeah. We can we can play at a fast level and uh, have a lot of possessions and, and be successful. So uh, what I've tried to do as a coach is change over the years according to our uh, our responsibilities, sure. our personnel, what can we do, what can we not do. And I always say every year by Christmas time, I can tell you 
pretty much uh, what we can do well, what we need to work on, what our weaknesses are, uh, what we have to change in order to be successful in the tournament level. Uh, so, yes, there's been some things about the game that's changed, mm -hmm. and there's been some things for me right. just because I guess I'm, uh, I don't know, you guys might use the word stubborn maybe. I don't, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, because I'm that way, right. uh, some things haven't changed. But with these guys, it's easy. It's really easy to be uh, their coach because our, our communication system uh, with these three guys mm -hmm. uh, has been fantastic. If they have something on their mind, they come and tell me. We've had a lot of groups that that's not been the case. Uh, mm -hmm. They were really, really hurting this week because we done the preseason really really intensely right and it's been hard and uh we backed off a little bit the last day or two because of hey coach our legs are dead and we're right. really tired and it, last night we played and you could tell there was a new freshness we'll be able to tell a little bit more tonight in our scrimmage right uh so from a communication standpoint these guys probably have that open line more than any group I've had. So that, that's probably a little bit of a change. Right. Uh, they're not afraid to tell me. Yeah. They're not afraid to tell me. They, they also know that I'll weigh their suggestions, but I'll also make the decision. But at least they come to me and, and, and share things. So from that perspective, yeah. um, that's been good. And like I said, that, that's, th those are the little things Jim, sure. that keep me coaching. Yeah. Because having a group of kids like this has been a real pleasure. Coach, before I talk to the boys, you, you've mentioned them a multitude of times, but they're your captains for a reason. Yeah, you know, normally uh, we center in on one in particular, or most cases we, we've, we've had uh, co-captains. Mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, when we talked with our group that was coming back in and the coaching staff, we felt like we really have three kids, and they all lead uh, in different ways. You know, Foster uh, obviously leads by example, but sure. also is probably the most vocal of the three. Uh, AK has his own quiet little way of – uh, of helping the younger some of the younger kids and doing his thing and you need that and then Matthew's another one who leads by example um, uh, I've said from the beginning I've always judged teams based on their best players that their best players our best players have to be our hardest workers mm -hmm. and there, this is a perfect example of at least up to this point that these three kids along with the other two kids that are going to start for us and I mentioned them Zach Cole and uh, Billy Eccles those kids have been our hardest workers and that's always for me as a coach a great sign of hopefully things to come because then nobody can question when Foster or AK or Matthew go when they go to them and say hey you need to be doing this mm -hmm. uh, that kid can't say well you don't right you're not doing that right these these guys work at it yeah and uh, and that's a leadership thing that can be learned uh, a lot of people believe believe leaders are born I I think that's to some extent but I also think these three kids in the two years I've had them this being the third year have developed some of those traits uh, that are important for leadership and that's why they're the right. tri captains that they are Foster you're up good morning sir good morning how are you I'm good you pretty good um he, he referenced you as a basketball junkie how would you define that I mean, the same way he said everything. I mean, we're always in the gym, all three of us. We're always in there shooting, mm -hmm. whether it's our dad rebounding, him rebounding, assistant coach. We rebound for each other. Mm -hmm. So, do you? I mean, obviously, you love the game of basketball and, and love it well to be participating as deep as you are. But why? At what point in time did you think, boy, basketball's my game? I, I talked to my parents about that quite a bit, actually. My mom, she started me playing basketball when I was in like first grade, something mm -hmm. like that, and. I, my dad coached my whole life, so I was always in the gym playing against my brother. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's when I really started loving it, always watching college basketball. Mm -hmm. You'd have the mini hoop up on the door frame, and I'd have an Indiana jersey, Hunter have a Purdue, <laughs> and I'd be giving him the work. So. Yeah. What about you as, as a player? Uh, you, you, you spend a lot of time in the gym. You, you work on a lot of things. What's what's a good, strong point of your of your basketball game, do you think? What do you do well? I think uh, my dad and Coach Baumholt and probably, also my uncle Danny Kramer they've they've helped me a lot with uh, understanding the game and knowing when to get somebody the ball and when not to and when to have to take over and really just like understand the game so do you um 
Do you like to score? I no, I don't. It don't matter to me really. I'd yeah. rather win. So whatever I have to do, I guess. How, what about defensive side of the basketball? How how do you like playing defense? It's all the same in my books. Like if you can defend, you can score, whatever. Just help the team in whatever you can. So defense is always a way you can help the team. Just talking or rebounding, getting an extra box out that people usually don't see. So you uh, you have a problem putting guys in the right spots on the floor? No, that's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's your outlook on the season? I think it's going to be just as interesting as the past two. We, just like Coach said, we've been working hard preseason, even before that. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great summer, and we're excited. So. All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Next up. Austin, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, talk about your part of the, the basketball game. Why, why do you play? Why do you play the game? Uh, I play the game because I fell in love with it at a young age. Mm -hmm. Just being in the gym all the time, me, TK, yeah. Matthew, Foster, yeah. we've been together since a young age, just playing basketball. Uh, what's, uh, what's a good part of your game? What do you do well? Uh, defense. Yeah? Starting the, from freshman year, I wasn't really good at defense, but mm -hmm. I've been working on it because that's what Coach Baumholt told me to do. <laughs> so I've been trying to get better at that. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, being able to, being able to, drive and shoot. Mm -hmm. You're a good pure shooter from the outside, do you think? Can you shoot well from the outside? Uh, I'm, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what's something you really need to work, I mean, you mentioned defense, but something you really need to work on hard specifically in your basketball game? Probably just handling the ball mm -hmm. with being pressured. Yeah. What about uh, your outlook for the season? Uh, I feel like it can just be just as good as the past two seasons, maybe even better. Yeah. All right. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Matthew, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, talk about uh, your your take on basketball. You you like to play the game a little bit. Yeah, I love to play basketball. Uh, actually, when I was younger, I really wasn't that skilled. Mm -hmm. And so I took hard work as like it became my passion just mm -hmm. to work hard to be better every day mm -hmm. and so that's I and since working hard since I was young it just started to fall in love with it slowly when you see it's a good point when you see hard work pay off does it make you work harder <laughs> yeah just want more mm -hmm. you know just wanting more than what you had you know yeah what's the strongest part of your game uh I say shooting is probably one of my strongest but now I'm starting to work in the post a lot more mm -hmm. and get more are you and you kind of alluded to it earlier you're gonna need a little bit more post play this year yes sir yeah and and how do you how do you cope with that I uh, just keep going you just keep trying to drive to the basket and score yeah and and your outlook for the season oh, I think it's gonna be really fun yeah. uh, you know these last two years have been a really fun ride and these next two are going to be even better. What does schedule look like for you guys? Well, it's uh, a similar schedule. Uh, the, the thing that's different this year, obviously, is that uh, we'll have to go to Jeffersonville, to Columbus East. But we also have picked up an inner city school from Dayton, Ohio, in a shootout at South Dearborn, uh, Thurgood Marshall, which just from watching what little video I had in the summer, uh, appears to be a very, very athletic type team. Uh, so we're going to have some challenges there in terms of the schedule. Um, we could easily, Tim, be a better basketball team than we were a year ago and maybe not in the regular season, may not win uh, as many games. I don't right. know. Right. It'll all depend on uh, a lot of different circumstances. But uh, I just think that this group of kids, they're going to compete no matter who you line them up against. Uh, the thing that's happened, I thought, the last uh, two years, probably more so than uh, any group that I've ever had over a period of more than just a year at a time. These kids have had a chance to win every game that they line up. Right. And that hasn't always been the case at Southwestern. It hasn't always been the case at other places I've coached. So we think the same thing's going to happen this year. When we line up for the jump ball, uh, we're probably going to have a pretty good chance to win if we just do the things that we do. And we, we talked a little bit in our preseason meeting uh, before we started practice. It was, you know, how are we going to do this? And it was, let, let's just try to do the ordinary things right. a lot better than our opponents do. Yeah. And let's play defense. Um, and, and if we can do that, 
and then uh, play together as a team, make those extra passes, do all that. Right. Uh, it's going to be another fun year, and uh, uh, I, ju I just think we have the right combination of personalities. I think we have the right combination of unselfish type players. Mm -hmm. uh, we have kids who don't need uh, to get 30 or 35 points a game, although we have the capability of right. kids that have done that. And two of them are sitting here that right. have hit the 30-plus mark. So um, it, it's just I, I look forward to it. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. Again, we have to develop uh, on the defensive end. We have to be a pretty good rebounding team because we're not gifted with a lot of great size. But uh, if we just stick to our fundamentals, which we've been able to do, and, and then uh, play unselfishly, it, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Coach, as always, it's a great visiting with you. Looking forward to the season. Thanks for being here today. Tim, we thank you and WORX and everybody for the coverage you give us, and hopefully we can uh, put on a pretty good show for you every time you come out and watch us. All so right. We appreciate it. No problem. Again, that's Coach Jerry Baumholt. want to say uh, thanks to Coach for coming in today. Thanks to Jordan Barrett Studio. Thanks to Southwestern uh, again for being here this, uh, this morning. We'll talk again next Saturday morning on Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. From McDonald's, I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7. A routine is a good thing to have. And sometimes a routine is a good thing to break. Start your morning at McDonald's with a hot, savory breakfast prepared fresh every morning, like a sausage McMuffin with egg or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that you can now mix and match for just four bucks until 11 a.m. Because if you don't deserve a morning that's a little easier and a lot tastier, who does?